بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الانبياء وعلى اله الاسكياء واصحابه الاتقياء اما بعد there are many unique things about believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being a muslim Things that are special, very important. Some of these things aren't unique to Islam, and other faiths who also believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala believe in this concept. But for us as Muslims, this is absolutely necessary. When you engage in a discussion and two people present their sides to an argument, for each argument, there's a counter argument. For each reason, there is another reasoning that's provided to provide another perspective. In Islam, when we build our arguments, ultimately, there is a point where we break beyond, where we break, where we break beyond where other people are thinking. And this all ties together in the belief of ours of Ba'ath Ba'ad al Maut. We believe in resurrection after death. We believe that everything in this life has value, but ultimately we will see the true value of what we do in the hereafter. So someone can argue with you, why do you read Quran? Why do you pray Salah? Why do you go for Hajj? And you can give a reason, they'll give a counter reasoning, you'll give another reason, then they'll give another reason, and you can go back and forward. But a point comes where a Muslim says that I do this because it's the command of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised me a reward. And outside of this conversation we're having, we're having right now, the ultimate purpose of this is to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And this is a big difference between a Muslim, someone who believes in God, and those who don't believe in God. People who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is partial. Their discussion and their reasoning ends at the grave. But for those people who truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their reasoning, the limit of their argument doesn't end at the grave, it continues way beyond that. We don't believe the grave to be the end of the journey. People announce the success of a person when someone dies. People gather together, they say a few good words, it's very common at that point people will say whether someone was a successful person or whether they failed their community. In Islam, we find out the success of a person in the hereafter. فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِ There are people who will be given their book of deeds in their right hand, and then there are those who will be given their book of deeds in their left hand. You can argue as much as you want, but this is one of those matters that you have to believe. And that's why the Qur'an regularly, continuously speaks of resurrection after death. How death isn't the end of your life. Rather when you die, you start a new phase of your journey. You continue on. Our souls existed before we entered into this world. We enter into this world and we are granted this body, which serves as a temporary vehicle for our soul to transition through this world and select the deeds that we choose to do as the angels write down everything that we choose and everything we do and everything we say. And then when we leave this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause His body to disintegrate. And when we are resurrected, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then give us a body. And then we will be held accountable. And depending on where our abode is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it Jannah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that people will be given bodies appropriate for Jannah. And for those that are sent to the fire of hell, may Allah protect us, they will be given bodies appropriate for the fire of hell. We must always remember that we can't forget this very important message of life after death. People will continue to reject it. There will be people who will laugh at it, who will mock it. But as the Urdu poet says, Jesi karni, wesi bharni, na maane to karke dek. What you do is what you'll get. If you don't believe it, do it. Give it a try. There is paradise. There is the fire of hell. 
If you don't believe it, die, give it a try. We'll see what happens in the hereafter. You may have reason, I have revelation. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught this message from the beginning. It was a part of his message that death isn't the end of it. It's a transition from this world to one beyond this world. It's a new phase of your life. The people of Makkah Mukarramah, they had their own faith system. The interesting thing about the people Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam interacted with from the leaders of Quraysh at that time, they actually believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, they didn't believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had multiple names and attributes. Rather, what they believed was, for every name of Allah that we recognize belongs to Allah, they believed there were other gods who carried out those functions. This is also common with many other polytheistic faiths. That for every name and attribute of God, they have a hundred different gods. Because they believe their God, the ultimate God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be limited. That He isn't capable. Therefore, He needs helpers. He needs people to help Him in areas that are beyond His reach, beyond His expertise. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلِيِّ الْعَظِيمِ In Islam, we say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد Allah is one. Allah is Samad. لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ And then the ayah finished, the surah finishes with, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَد Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught them pure monotheism. In addition to this monotheism, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also taught them the lesson of resurrection after death. The Quraysh didn't believe in this. They found it something that was very funny and laughable. They would make jokes at the Muslims, make jokes at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if there is paradise in the hereafter, I am the most wealthiest, I am the most deserving of it, you'll see me, I'll have the best Jannah. They're kind of mocking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa viewing themselves as entitled because they had so much in the world that somehow resulted in success in the hereafter. One day, one of them, according to one riwayah, it was As bin Wa'il, and according to another narration, it was Ubay bin Khalaf. He comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a bone in his hand that he picked up from a valley. And he says to the Prophet sallallahu are you saying, once we turn into this, God will resurrect us? Then he took the bone and he crumbled it and blew it into the air. Is that what God's going to do? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, he will give you death, he will resurrect you, and then he will send you to the fire of hell. Very powerful message. This person got very arrogant, very boastful. The mockery was on a new level. Making fun of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the command of Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed. And it was in result of this action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals some verses in the Quran to capture the story before us, to tell us of this man who thought he was so special and so smart that he can come and argue with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this, with this cheap display of you know, intellectual you know, expression. These verses are gathered in the last five verses of Surah Yasin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا And He comes and gives us an example. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا He gives us an example. وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ While He forgets His own creation. قَالَ He said, مَنْ يَحْيِ الْعِظَامُ Who will bring these bones back to life? وَهِيَ رَمِيمُ Once they've disintegrated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say to them, قُلْ يُحْيِهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً The one who gave you life from nothing will create you from something. The one who created you the first time will create you again. الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّجَرِ الْأَخْضَرِ نَارًا فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُقِدُونَ The one who created for you fire from the green tree. The Arabs had this tree and they would use the tree, two, at two parts of the tree and they would hit it against each other like a matchstick. And would create, it would create fire. Sometimes you look at something that doesn't seem to be able to offer another, but it does, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed it. How does fire come from a tree? فَإِذَا أَنْتُمْ مِنْهُ تُوْقِدُونَ You then use that fire, that wood to burn, and you benefit from it. أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ مِثْلَهُمْ O smart, intelligent one, the one with all these beautiful examples, using your brain a little too much, 
Have you not seen the one who created the heavens and the earth? Do you think he's really incapable of creating you again, bringing you back to life? That he create like you again? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the great creator, Al Alim, the knowledgeable one. إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون إنما أمره all Allah needs to do his affair is simple إنما is الحصر all Allah needs to do إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا when he wills for something أن يقول له that he say to it كن فيكون he says be and it will فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون Glorified in, to the one in whose hand lies the realm and dominion of everything. And to him you will return. These five verses of Surah Yasin tell us a story of a man who came arrogantly to Rasulullah with this argument. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, this will happen. It will surely happen. So while we live in this world, each day when we wake up, Think about the day that you will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most important moment in your life, in this worldly life, is the moment right before the last breath exits your lips. It all boils down to whether you have iman in that moment or not. If you have iman in that last moment, you've done good in this world, inshallah. And the most important moment in your entire existence is the day that you're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there will be no one else to be there for you. Your father can't be there, your teacher can't be there. لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ تُرْجُمَانِ Not even an interpreter between you and Allah. لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَاب Not even a veil between you and Allah. It'll be you and Allah. Your name will be called. You will stand before your Lord. And in that moment, each and every one of us will have to present our hisab. If we're lucky, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overlook our sins, overlook our transgressions, and give us Jannah. And that's our hope. We just finished the first 10 days of Ramadan. We enter into the middle 10 days today. These are the days of maghfirah. We ask Allah to forgive us all. Shower us with His Father and in His favor, His grace, and that He make us from those who are blessed with Jannah. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.